Welcome to the 401k Audit CPA Success Show, where we're 100% focused on helping companies across the United States prepare for their 401k audit. If you have 100 eligible participants in your 401k plan, then this podcast is for you. Welcome to episode three. Today, we have a great topic. In our last episode, we talked a little bit about our streamlined process. Today, we're gonna talk about what it's like to go through an audit, specifically a distributed audit. Since Summit is a distributed team, we're gonna talk about what the possible differences are there. To have this conversation, I am joined by Kim Moore, our audit director, and Kyle Tanaka, our audit senior. So we're excited to talk about this. So um, Kim, let's just jump right in. Kind of explain the um, process for us. Thanks, Jamie. Sure. The audits follow a pretty standard process throughout the entire process of completing an audit, but they are a little bit different. We're going to highlight some of the differences in doing an audit virtually and using a distributed audit team versus what some of our clients and potential clients may be used to where the audit team physically comes to their location uh, and spend a day or two days or a week or multiple weeks, depending on the situation, <laughs> at the actual client location. So when we start an audit, an audit begins with some planning materials. Um, we have to first have the engagement letter signed, um, engaging us to begin the audit. Um, that's a formal letter. It's kind of like a contract between the audit firm and the client or the plan in this case to conduct the audit. But once all that kind of paperwork is done, we begin what's called the planning process. And we use the planning process just like you would imagine planning to find out about the plan, to find out about the company that has sponsored the plan, to find out about the payroll structure that's utilized by the company, to look historically at the plan, um, the financial information. There's a whole variety of information that we gather and we review to make sure that we have a real good understanding of all the components of the plan and how it works. At the beginning of the process, we'll do a kickoff meeting with the client and we'll just gather some general information. We'll do basic introductions. And we use a tool called GoToMeeting to do that because we are not physically going to visit the client. Most firms might do that either via just a simple phone call or they might physically go to the client's location to do the meeting. But we have clients all over the country. So we use something called GoToMeeting and it's just what it says. It's a meeting software tool that allows us to have as many people as we would like on the call. It's done via video as well as audio. So you're talking to the people. You can see them if you choose to use that feature. And um, we'll just talk about the various um, components of the audit, the timing, like I said, do some basic introductions. And we'll use that go-to meeting tool throughout the audit as we need to discuss things and gather information from the client and as well as share information that we may have. From that conversation, we will gather basic information that will allow us to put together our first document request. That's typically an audit speak called a PBC list or sometimes a document request list. There's various terms for it. But we use a tool called Smartsheet to gather that information. That is an electronic tool um, that we subscribe to, and we will have one for each audit. And in that tool will be listed the items that we need to conduct the audit, and it'll start from that very beginning planning type material. We'll continue using that sheet throughout the audit. And uh, it lists on each line one particular item or particular grouping of items that we need. It'll provide information about that. It'll say who needs to provide that to us and a due date. So we'll set that up, give access to that smart sheet to the folks that we're working with on the audit, as well as the folks here at Summit that are going to be working on the audit. And it's an interactive tool. So it's available 24-7. The people can get into it as often and whenever they want. So if they find uh, maybe they got some extra time on a Saturday or something. They can get into the tool and load whatever information they want. They can make notes on it. And the same for us. We have 24-7 access to it as well. So if you've got a few minutes to work on something, that's great. 
you can get in and use it. If um, you need to spend an hour to upload, you can do that as well. It's it's really um, a very flexible tool. I don't know, Kyle, you Kyle just joined us this year. He's new to Summit, um, and he has done 401k audits before, but more in the mode of going to the client. So Smartsheet would have been a new tool for him. Kyle, do you want to kind of explain your experience with Smartsheet and um, what you found um, good and bad about it? <laughs> yeah, definitely. So Smartsheet, it's a really robust uh, web-based tool that we can request like specific things like a specific year's plan document and then the client is able to securely upload the document so we can see it on the specific line that we requested it on so you know it makes things really easy because it's already indexed and the client uploads it there so it's really as simple as just dragging it from the smart sheet to our uh, web-based audit software so you know it really cuts down on time and it's really handy because uh, at my old firm, we would physically go out to the client's office and then we would have to bring like a really junk scanner. And then, you know, all the letters is illegible and, you know, that it just rips their paper up. So, yeah, it really saves us a lot of time and streamlines a lot of the requests that we need. Is there, is there any limitations to Smartsheet in terms of like document types or document size or is it pretty um, going to do all that? No, no, not really. It's it's another good um, reason for using the Smartsheet tool. If you're sending things even via secure, using a portal or securing the information, trying to send an email, there's all kinds of limitations on the size. And we do need a lot of documentation. That's one of the kind of hallmarks of an audit is that there's a lot of, you know, electronic paper that's going back and forth. So Smartsheet eliminates that because it it will allow any kind of really electronic, obviously it has to be electronic, but any kind of electronic document. So PDF, Excel, Word, um, camera pictures, um, any any kind. I mean, we've, we've actually had that. <laughs> yeah. um, so, it, you know, it will take just about anything, sizes and a limitation. Um, it's a very robust tool, as Kyle mentioned. So it, you know, the, the, the lines just keep going. You can keep adding things. We can add numbers of people. So we're not limited in that we can only have two or three people on the sheet. We can have multiple people if we need to. And Kyle brought up a, a real good point that it, it's secure. So we deal with very confidential information in these audits, as you can imagine, payroll data, birth date, hire date, emails, home addresses, even mm -hmm. salary information. And in certain cases, it can even be medical information, just variety of things. Um, so we want to make sure on both sides that that information is protected and that there's not a risk. You know, if you were just sending it straight through the email, obviously there's risk that someone could intercept that, get a hold of that. This eliminates that. And it's very access sensitive. So even all the folks here at Summit don't have access to it. And even within the audit team, only the individuals working on that particular audit have access. So it's very limited. We only grant access to others outside of the organization that the client is telling us need access. We would never, you know, grant it to just anybody. So at the security aspect is is very important to us. Um, we take that very seriously here. And also, as Kyle mentioned, it's a very organized tool. So it eliminates us having to, you know, sort through tons of data and trying to figure out, I wonder what they meant this to be for. And it also retains the documents. So as we are pulling the documents down and using them, if we forget to pull something down or maybe we're looking at something saying, I don't think I'm going to need that, I'm, I'm, so I'm not going to pull that and use it. And as in we're working through the audit, we find out, oh, yeah, now I know why they meant to, <laughs> to give me that. I really do need it. Um, it's still sitting there. So until we either physically remove it or we delete the smart sheet, it will stay there and we'll leave it there until the audit is completed and then we'll go back and delete it. So it saves us having to go back to the client saying, I know you sent this to me, but for whatever reason, I don't have it and I need it. Can you send it again? It eliminates all of that, which the clients find, you know, very helpful. It's also useful to them. We'll, we'll keep them sometimes 
from one year to the next. And the client will say, hey, you know, you've asked me for this particular payroll report. I can't remember what I gave you. Can you show me what I gave you last year? Uh, we can easily just give them access to that. And they'll actually usually retain the access and they can go look and say, oh, yeah, it was report number 55 out of the thousand I've got access to. <laughs> so I'm going to go generate report number 55 for this year. So it's it's a really helpful tool. We we found the clients really, really like it. It saves us a lot of time also because we can just send them the example of exactly what we used last year. Yeah, I, yeah. I can think back to my audit days and I can't remember how many times I would be in an audit room. Um, again, I was, I was on the field auditing, but you'd be in the <laughs> audit room, which was more like a coat closet. But, um, and you would have that one sheet. You're like, I know we requested 45 things, but I don't know what this one sheet is. So to have that, um, tied to an actual request number, that's super helpful. And then again, for the follow up, like I'm sure that the clients just love it. The amount of, um, how organized we are. Yeah, definitely. And it, it helps in, in our conversations with them because the tool looks very much like an Excel sheet. If the viewers are familiar with Excel, which I think everybody is, you know, as we're on a go to meeting with the folks, we can say, well, look at line number three. If there's confusion, mm -hmm. you can say, look at line number three. And we're talking specifically, you know, on that line, we need this particular item instead of you're just trying to generically talk about things. Um, it helps make those conversations go easier and um, usually quicker. You don't have to, you know, fumble around trying to get everybody on the same page. So that really helps. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And so um, how does the sheet adapt? Because if I remember correctly from my audit days, you would have the um, the first request list would go out and that would be kind of the, the preliminary request list. And then you would take that and there'd be a lot of follow-up requests. So you just, you just add it to the bottom. Does it create a new sheet? So how do those follow-up requests work? Yeah, we actually use um, template sheets. So we already have templates set up depending on the type of audit, if it's a returning client or a brand new client, depending on various activities that have gone on in that plan versus another one. So we'll pull the template when we first set up the sheet. And they're already set up with different sections. So we'll start off with the first section, which is that generic information you mentioned. Uh, and then it'll have a middle section, which is kind of the, the next set of information. And then the bottom section will be the very specific testing items unique to that particular audit, that particular year. And then we can just continue adding. We can create new sections. We can create new lines. The client can add a line if they want to say, you know, that instead of following this particular format, I'm going to give you this because I think you're going to need this. They can add information. They can add comments. They can add lines. So, yeah, it just keeps going. Another nice feature about Smartsheet is that you can turn on notifications. It's it's an option. You don't have to use it, but we found it very useful that we can turn notifications on on both sides. So we can have a notification. The client can set it so they get a notification. And that would tell either party that someone's added something. And then it will send you an email saying there's been activity on this sheet. It will, in the email, kind of give you a little picture, not the whole smart sheet, but a picture of it saying here's some lines where either something's changed or something's been added. That way the client doesn't have to go out every day and look. They're going to know when something's added. We usually will be doing emails or phone calls with the client anyway. So they're going to, you know, they're going to get it a couple of different ways, but you can set it up. So it, it would be completely automated if you wanted, you know, wanted to do that. And that's nice because we don't always know when the client is adding information. So it saves us because we're working on, of course, multiple audits at a time. So it saves us every day having to go out looking at 20 different smart sheets. We'll know nothing's happened on that one. So I I can leave that one alone and focus on a on a different one. So another nice feature that it provides. Great. So Kyle, I'm going to ask you this question. So a lot of our listeners might have not gone through a 401k audit before. So can you kind of explain what some of these requests are? Um, like what type of things they need to pull, how difficult they're usually for them to find? I think that'd be really helpful for them. Yeah. So typical audit approach is we kind of look at the year's activities. So if there is a distribution to say 40 people, we'll want to test, you know, a sample size of about like, depending on the dollar amount, it, it can vary. But yeah, so we ask for support for things like that. So making sure that the 
check is being sent to the proper person, uh, if the type of money, whether it be uh, pre-tax contributions or Roth contributions, we like to follow up and make sure those are being, you know, segregated based on the money types. So yeah, we look at the approval. We make sure things are, you know, the dollar amount is correct. There's people authorizing it. And, you know, we just like to make sure that it's properly being handled. A lot of that stuff, they, they, they have easy access to, right? So if I'm looking for that distribution, I can find the check copy and I can go and pull that up and, and show you that it was who it was sent to. So it's, it's usually not think so. a ton of digging yeah. for, for me <laughs> as, a, a, as a client, right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's, those are the easy things to kind of pull down. But the more complicated things are, you know, things like death distributions. So typically you have to get a death certificate to release money to like the estate. So things like that we also look at. So, which is why Smartsheet is great because we specifically can ask for those types of things for our audit. So, so Kim, the question back to you now then. So I talked about some of the items that they be, might be requesting. So what would be key for me as a potential client to be prepared for a 401k audit? You know, it's, it's tough for a client to prepare ahead of time for an audit because one of the requirements of an audit is that they all have to be unique and um, we, we can't just do the same thing over and over again. What I tell people to do, um, the most important thing for you is to make sure as a plan sponsor that you understand your plan. So key documents include the plan document itself, the adoption agreement, if there's a separate adoption agreement, summary plan description things like that that are your key documents describing how the plan works. Also, you should be monitoring on a regular basis the activity going on in your plan. And your sponsor or your provider will provide information to you reporting. Usually you have a link to some website that will give you all kinds of information. So you should be in there anyways, whether you need an audit or not. You should be in regularly monitoring to make sure that all the contributions are getting into the plan. As Kyle mentioned, the distributions are are proper, that um, there's nothing being distributed that, um, you know, it's a termination distribution for an employee that's still working for you. You know, that would be a key. Uh Oh, I better, I better be looking at this. That, that, that doesn't sound right. So just in general, I mean, not obviously you're not going to do an audit on every single transaction. Nobody has time for that. But just in general, monitoring what's going on. So when the auditors are asking you for various pieces of information, you're not surprised by what they're asking for. You may not have at hand the exact piece of information we're going to be asking you for, but you should know where to get it. You should know the kinds of documents available. Um, you should know the kinds of activity that your plan had. And the other thing I, I tell our clients and, and prospective clients is don't be afraid to go back to the auditor. You know, if the auditor is asking you for something that just either you don't understand why they're asking, you know, what do you need that for? Uh, or it just doesn't make sense. They're asking you for uh, participant loan information and your plan doesn't have loans. <laughs> uh, you know, don't, don't struggle with it and try to figure out, well, what can I give them to ask them? Why do you need that? You know, uh, or you're asking for a particular payroll report. Maybe you don't have one exactly like that. Ask them, can I give you this instead? Um, that maybe doesn't conform exactly to what you've said, but it hits most of the things that, you know, that may be sufficient because the auditor doesn't know what you have. So, you know, a good dialogue back and forth can save everybody a lot of time uh, and a lot of frustration and the auditors don't mind. I mean, I think there's this and kind of idea out there that you, you know, oh, I better just give them everything they ask for and I better not say anything. Um, and which isn't true. I mean, the auditors are, we're people too. And, and we understand that for all of our clients, they're not in the business of having a 401k plan. This is just a benefit that they offer and they want to do a good job, but you know, they're not experts on it. So feel free to ask us questions, push back on things, you know, ask, can I give you this as an alternative? A lot of times that will work just as well. And it, like I said, we'll save everybody a lot of time and frustration. It's a lot of back and forth for sure. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. Great. I think those are both key points. One being organized. I think, um, you know, again, um, I, I know when you're working with a client, the more organized they are, the better it's going to go and the more smoothly it's going to go. If you, if you send them a request in the morning and they have it pulled that afternoon, like it's, it makes life so much easier. <laughs> for sure. Oh, it just makes, yeah. And it's, it's, it's good for the client too, because the, the quicker you do things, obviously the quicker the audit can get done, but the longer it drags out everybody, you know, we all have short <laughs> attention spans and short memories and you'll forget what you asked. And then you're going to ask the, the auditor and the auditor can't remember and it just drags everything out. And there, you know, it's not necessary. It just makes everything go smoother and it's less frustrating to everybody. The other thing I'd mentioned that, that we have seen over the last few years, I don't know if it's getting worse or it just it sticks out in my mind, we unfortunately, you know, you're, you're auditing the 401k plan. And so obviously you're going to need a lot of information related to the 401k plan. That only makes sense. But if you think about how a 401k plan works, it's driven by the payroll of the company. So an empl employee that's participating in 401k plan is going to say withhold. Often it's a percentage of my compensation. So maybe 5% of my compensation. Don't pay it to me. Put it into my account in the 401k plan. Maybe there's an a company match, which is going to again be based off of your deferral amount, which is based off your compensation. So we have to go back. Uh, a lot of the data we're getting is payroll data, HR data. It's, it's in that space. So it's, it's things like year end payroll reports, pay stubs, documentation, like time reports for a particular pay period. How many hours did an hourly employee work? W-2 copies, tax reporting, other tax reporting copies like 940, 941 reports. And unfortunately, we find out um, as we're putting together these requests and talking to the to the um, our clients, uh, they look at you and oh, I didn't keep any of that. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, and it we're usually only a year out. So right now we're in 2019, we would be uh, wrapping up to 2018 plan year. So that's your 2018 calendar year. And yet they didn't keep any W-2s that they issued to people in 2019 for the 2018 payroll. They didn't keep any tax reporting. You know, they didn't keep any pay information. So that's something I would encourage everybody, whether, again, you need a 401k on it or not, to keep your key payroll data. And if you're going to switch payroll providers, which happens quite frequently, people will find another payroll provider that maybe offers a little bit better service or maybe they're a little bit cheaper. Uh, and that's all fine. But you got to remember, just because you switch payroll providers, it doesn't exempt you from providing all the information you had with that previous payroll provider, which may become very difficult at the time of the audit. It may cost you money because once you've left that payroll provider, they may say, sure, I'll give you copies of all those W-2s, but it's going to cost you so many dollars per W-2, you know? So, and the companies don't think about those things when they're switching. They just think about, you know, the going forward part. They don't think about having to provide historical information. So, those are things to keep in mind too, the kind of pain points that we found in the audits from the client's standpoint. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Um, it's, sometimes it's not not easy to remember what you need to keep and not, and so it's it's hard to go back and be like, oh, do I need to keep that? Or <laughs> that's, that's always a tough question. Right. It it's what well, it surprises me that companies don't keep W twos because. I would think it's fairly common that an employee would come back and say, hey, I'm getting audited by the IRS. I need a copy of my W-2 right. because I didn't keep it, <laughs> which surprises me too. But but that does happen. So, But uh, that's a very common thing for us, that payroll data um, and HR data too, things like I-9 copies, um, just various things as you think you have an employee throughout their tenure with the company, you're going to have the various different things that they're going to fill out or information you're going to gather from them. Even things like um, an email address. You know, if we want to send confirmations, we need an email. Uh, and quite often, well, you know, I, I maybe had that at one time, but I don't have a current email. Um, so all those kinds of things are important. So document retention policy, very important. Yes, for sure. 
So this last question to you, Kyle. Um, so I know it's, it's been, you're, you're new to the distributed model um, to the audit. So anything else that's uh, different? We talked about smart sheets. We talked about go to anything else that's a little bit different. Uh, just my, just the everyday process is to me, it's a huge improvement because, you know, we can, my dream document is like everything is in electronic form. So, you know, when we would go out to the client's office, we would, I, I have been stuck in a supply closet before <laughs> and, you know, they, the HR person has to drag up a huge box of just paper and, you know, it takes time to go through that. But, you know, as a distributed model, we can just uh, look at PDF and then recognize text and then we can just control find from there. And, you know, there's a lot of scale of economy because the more we can do, it's just easier. So, yeah, it's just to me, it's really streamlined and the air is a lot cleaner in my office, too. (laughs) 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 That makes sense. Anything else? Well, you know, Kyle, I, I I think you bring up a good a good point from the the doing things virtually and the distributed model we use. I mean, it's good for us because we can have clients all over the country. Mm-hmm. Good for us from a staffing standpoint because we can have staff wherever we can get the best people because we're not limited to um, a, a certain geography close to an office. But it's good for the clients because. You know, how many times have you had to have people, whether it's an auditor or a vendor or something, come into your office and and then you got to worry about where am I going to put them? And uh, I don't want them wandering around my, you know, the last thing you want is an auditor wandering around your facility, you know, looking at stuff. (laughs) Um, You know, that that was always a, a common complaint. So this way, you know, we can work at to their time frame what works best for them and we don't physically have to set there if if a client needs to reschedule because some big project maybe blows up and they need a little bit of extra time before they get started on the 401k audit you know we're not with a plane reservation waiting to get to their office so we can reschedule um fairly easily if if we need to we try not to do that but if we need to just because of the urgency of something going on we can certainly do that it's a lot easier for us than when you physically go to the office. So it provides a lot of, you know, extra additional things you don't think about um, that are positives, I think. Yeah, I think the clients are a lot less stressed because you don't have, I, I the worst, most guilt I ever felt was during payroll, payroll runs, I would have to go into the HR office and ask for reports, but they, like all their computers are all busy. So, <laughs> you know, they look at you really stressed out and they're like, can you come back tomorrow? And I'm just like, okay. <laughs> But I bet both of you guys missed the free snacks in the kitchen. So that was one of my favorite parts about that. Oh, it was like yes. it was Donut Friday. <laughs> or take you to lunch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had I had one client that had a free donut Friday. They brought a ton, a ton of donuts in. And like I wouldn't eat breakfast, I wouldn't eat lunch. That would be I'd be like 12 donuts that day. And I, I'm sure you yeah. guys missed that. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> we, we we don't get those perks. Yeah. That's the unfortunate thing. But no, I, I think like you said, it's been probably six or seven years since I've done an audit, but it sounds way, way improved and much better. So I'm, I'm it sounds like you guys are doing a great job there. So technology is a mm-hmm. huge help. It's it's the future. Yeah, it's the future of audit. I think more and more audits are gonna go this this way, or at least parts of the audit will go that way. Um it just makes sense. I mean, so many companies are virtual themselves, so definitely. Mm-hmm. You know, physically going somewhere just doesn't doesn't make as much sense as it used to. Well, I definitely appreciate you guys taking some time today uh, to join us. So um, I appreciate it. I think you got a lot of good information out of this. I think, like I said, I've I've learned a lot more about the audit process. So I do appreciate that. And um, thanks for both of you for joining us. Thanks so much. Thank you. Enjoyed this episode? Visit our website at summitcpa.net to get more tips and strategies for achieving 401k audit success. We're here to be a resource with ever-changing rules and regulations.